Hello, everyone. I'm James Milan. Welcome to this episode of Million Dollar Gift, our series that really focuses and tries to at least identify and maybe even put some a kind of value on something that can't really be valued in this way, and that is the volunteer energy that makes Arlington run. Today, I am talking to Bob Sprague. Bob is the creator of yourarlington.com, and um, he is a man about town. As anybody who has been to uh, meetings or activities of all sorts or celebrations or commemorations, et cetera, Bob is there an awful lot of the time. If he's not, then one of his journalists is. So, uh, Bob, I really appreciate your taking the time to, to talk to us today. Welcome. Glad to talk to you about something I love. I, I have to say that's, that's clear from the evidence, right? Because um, you have been doing this uh, with no compensation for yourself for a good long while now. In fact, tell us how long ago did you start your Arlington Dot? I, I just celebrated the 14th year, uh, December the 10th, 2006 that is, is, is when it launched. That is um, quite a run. Uh, not not the earliest uh, hyperlocal uh, website by any measure. They go back uh, to the mid 1990s. Uh, but I was influenced by a book by Dan Gilmore called We the Media, which I read in uh, 19, 2005, mm -hmm. just after I was laid off from the globe. And it gave me the idea, wait a minute, I don't have to be laid off. I can continue to do this. That's that's wonderful. Let, let, let me ask you actually, before we come back to the origins of your Arlington, uh, take us a little bit, you know, give us a little sense of what you were doing up to uh, 2005, 2006. Um, obviously you've just mentioned that you were at the Globe. So tell us about your own journalism background. <laughs> I won't give you the whole resume, but it goes back to 1970 uh, when I uh, dropped out of uh, being a PhD candidate in English at Lehigh University and just went down the street and got a job as a reporter. And uh, I knew nothing about it. I l learned everything that I learned in reporting right from the get-go at the Bethlehem Globe Times which uh, I was fortunate to be working for when it won a Pulitzer Prize in 1972. Um, the connection there, I hope? Uh, <laughs> I cannot say that I had anything to do with it. Hey, you uh, were some there. Of my, some of my coworkers are there and it's exciting to work out of a small newspaper that won a Pulitzer Prize. Yeah, that is a um, remarkable accomplishment for a, a local newspaper, right? Um, I, I did work for an even smaller newspaper after that called the Quakertown Free Press and uh, in 1977 won a first prize in reporting um, for opening closed government meetings, uh, uh, a series of about 75 stories that led to the opening of previously closed meetings. Um, great to, moved, great moved to be involved. to New involved. England in 1982, worked okay. for the Patriot Ledger. 85, uh, worked for the Boston Herald, where I uh, met my wife, Marjorie Howard. Um, we were married in 89. Uh, we moved to Arlington and got married just about the same week. <laughs> um, so you've been here since around 1989, 1990? I, my wife has been here since the 70s. I've been here since 89. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I left the Herald and taught for three years at Emerson College. And unfortunately, the professor whose uh, seat I was taking came back. And, uh, <laughs> Foiled I all your plans. I had to get a job. And that job turned out to be uh, the editor of The Advocate uh, in 1994, 95. Um, so you started in local media, obviously, in, in, in Bethlehem. and you then you know had quite a tenure um with a number of different kinds of yeah. journalistic organizations or newspapers mostly um but then interestingly after you know having some rich experience 
both with the, the Herald and the Globe, you know, major newspapers in, of the region, um, you, you chose on some level, right, to return to community media with The Advocate um, before, you know, eventually launching uh, your Arlington. So tell us a little bit about why you have spent so much time operating in really hyper-local contexts. I, I like, I have some contrast there because I have worked at the Globe and I've worked at the Herald and you're much, you're much farther away from the audience uh, when you work uh, for larger uh, news organizations. Uh, for a smaller one, like, like the Advocate, you've got somebody walking in the door and just telling you how you screwed up uh, uh, last week and telling it uh, to your face. And uh, so you have to swallow your pride and uh, figure out what you did wrong and make it better. And uh, I, I really enjoy the direct uh, communication uh, with, in addition to which I love Arlington. So uh, I knew that what, what I, whatever I was gonna do after the globe, it would, have, it would be connected to the town. And uh, the, the whole story of what I've been doing is helping to explain to the town about itself. And it's, it's really, really as simple as that. Yeah, simple but vitally important, you know. And and there, uh, you know, initial the initial impetus for reaching out to you, uh, though we could have done it at any point since we created this series, uh, was the you know the the rumors uh, that uh, that your Arlington may be uh, in its last days. Um, happily, you have confirmed that you will be operating at least through the middle of this coming year of 2021. I'm continuing. Um, uh, I need help. <laughs> I have been doing it by myself uh, for the most part uh, from 2006 to 2014. About 2014, I began to pay writers and uh, much more so since 2015 on to now. I have two two regular writers, uh, one uh, select board and one school committee. And they're, they're excellent, um, but I need help beyond that. Um, I will be in the new year looking for an ad salesperson, not a great uh, economy to be doing that. Mm -hmm. However, we, things are going to improve as the uh, vaccine takes hold. So I do have a lot of confidence and optimism about what's coming next. I'll also be looking for some partners. People well, we will sh share the load. Right, no, no doubt about that. Um, and we will do what we can at ACMI to amplify that message as best we can. Um, let, me, let me ask you though, to look back. You said that you've been in Arlington as a resident for now 31 years or so, yeah. um, and that you love the place. And clearly I you do. do from the work that you do. Um, what, uh, just share some of your thoughts about what Arlington felt like, was like, uh, when you first moved in, in 1989 and versus where things are today. When I, when my wife and I moved here, it was just us and in what seemed like a big house on Washington street. And, uh, uh since then we've adopted, uh, two children. Um, who have uh, grown up in this house. And when I first moved here, I really wasn't connected to the community. I, I did get the advocate. And so I, I read the news, uh, but it's, uh, once we adopted our first child, it was much more immediate connection to uh, the town and, and the schools. Then of course, when I was editor of the advocate, you're just thrown into the middle of it. How long did you uh, take the editorship of The Advocate on? Not long enough. Nine months. However, in that time, uh, the paper won uh, best newspaper in the country, 10,000 uh, circulation and under. And uh, part of that was me, but part of that was also Mark Levy, who happened to be my best student when I taught at Emerson College. I was fortunate enough to hire him. He now runs CambridgeDay.com, which is a partner of your Arlington. Guess why? We're longtime allies. 
<laughs> Absolutely. And it does seem like uh, awards seem to coincidentally follow you around. Um, so uh, congratulations on that one. That is a remarkable achievement as well. And one I didn't know. Um, so that's- Well, that's it amazing. used to be on the paper's masthead, <laughs> but they took it off. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, a, that, that's a quite the accomplishment in a nine month tenure, that's for sure. Um, I, wanna, I wanna kind of push forward to your Arlington. Um, and and ask you, you know, where did where did the idea come from? Was it something that had been in gestation for a long time, as far as you were concerned? Was it a, a sudden impulse, something in between? How did you how did you decide to take that on? I guess uh, you'd have to say uh, after the shock of being laid off from the Globe and figuring out what to do with myself, I ju I just sat down and. And it came to me like boing. Uh, after reading the book by Gilmore, We the Media, uh, his one of the points in his book is that the community can help be your reporters. So the basic idea behind Your Arlington, hence the name Your Arlington, was to make it less my Arlington and more your Arlington. That is the people who would provide the information to describe Arlington to itself. Um, I'd have to say that that experiment is, is, remains unfulfilled. Uh, there's great potential out there for citizen uh, journalism that remains to be tapped. It's and, something and that I we... think basic journalism can be taught. So uh, whoever I'm dealing with uh, here at, at the website, I'm always teaching. Yes, uh, clearly you are, I'm sure, a teacher by nature. Um, I spent 23 years teaching myself and, um, you know, really enjoy working with our interns at ACMI all the time, uh, both on their writing as well as, you know, how it is that they cover stories, et cetera. And it's, you know, it is very, very fulfilling work um, yeah. to work with young minds who are really interested in this particular um you know, corner of, of the world of journalism and of the world uh, we live in um, and just really kind of helping nudge them forward is, uh, it, 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 it feels great, I gotta say. Um, you took the, you know, you began the website, as you said, about 14 years ago. Things have changed a lot over that course of time, over the course of time, even that, you know, mere decade and a half in that particular world. So how how did you get things go you know how much of an education did you have to give well, yourself uh, i'm totally i'm, I'm totally self-taught on the on the tech end uh, i i learned um basic html coding in the late uh, 90s and in fact started the town's website which i don't know if you knew that i didn't know um, that the 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 first iterations of the town's website, which is now much more professionally run. Uh, I, I did. Mm -hmm. And I, I, got, I got files from Paul Schlickman and uh, some others who contributed uh, image files and put it together and it became the town's website. So did you do I, that? Did you, did you do that as a volunteer? Um... At first, but then I did get a job uh, as the school's information person working for Kay Donovan. Uh, and then six months later, the town uh, in the IT department, in the comptroller's office, strangely enough, uh, agreed to another halftime job doing the town's website. So I brought, I brought all those uh, files uh, with me and, and we got going. Man, you have had your fingers in an awful lot of pies in this town, that's for sure. <laughs> the, 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 to start my own website, though, I had to learn a new, I had to learn a new language and uh, the, uh, that underlies what you see today. And that language called um, Joomla, uh, a um, African word that means community, um, uh, has kept growing through the years, over 15 years, to become a much better platform than it was when I started, much more stable. Great, yeah, I mean, you've got enough 
you know, enough challenges just to get your work done uh, without having to worry about those headaches all the time. Um, you had mentioned a few minutes ago in talking about, mm, you know, the need for and your own commitment to citizen journalism uh, that you felt like it's not it's not been as successful as you no. as you would would like. Um, why you know? Do you have any idea why that is? Well, it, uh, just be be humble about it. It's it's so many hours in the day, and um, I I think were I to start this venture over again, I'd probably start with seeking partners to start with, rather than do everything myself and then figure try to figure out how do I get myself out of this now? Mm -hmm. um, you really, you need, really need help as your own little community to, to be more effective in the community as a whole. So in the new year, I'm gonna be uh, seeking help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's only taking you 14, 15 years to figure <laughs> that out, right? Just kidding. Um, the, the, your conception for, for your Arlington, I know um, from talking to you over, over the years that it's not like you set out to make it a kind of pro bono enterprise. Uh, you know, no, it, it, it was, it was a dot com from the start and a, a hope to, to make, to make money. But it, it's made only a limited amount of money. And the amount of money that I do make, I, I pay, pay people and I put, put into software. Don't pay myself. Yeah. And, you know, I think that bears repeating. Um, this is a 14 plus year effort of yours now for which you ha are not, have not received any recompense. In fact, and, I can uh, say that when the family has had some hard times sometimes and our, we came up a little short in the month, I would transfer some money over from my business account into my, into my home account and just remember, okay, I, I just uh, took a loan there and um, it, gets, it gets paid back eventually, but the one has helped the other. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I mean, it sounds like you've been very scrupulous about it, but it doesn't matter. I mean, however often that's happened, it's nothing compared to the many, many, many months now uh, all put together that you have been doing this work basically for the benefit of the community um, and, you know, not for your own at least fiscal reward. Uh, speaking of which, though, how rewarding is it? Has it been for you and in what way? I simply wouldn't do this if I didn't love it, and um, I, I can I continue to love it, and uh, can't wait to get going every morning. To uh, who's written me? What's the what's the latest controversy coming coming over the transom? Uh, how can I best and most fairly and most accurately portray it? Because uh, even though uh, I did work at the Herald for uh, six years, I, I was not comfortable with some of their portrayal of news. It's, I'm, I'm much more comfortable with the way the Globe uh, uh, portrays news. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just a personal matter. And I think uh, Arlington as a community deserves uh, accuracy and uh, fairness. And I try to give it to them. And when people don't agree with me, uh, believe me, uh, they let me know. Well, on that subject, in a sense, uh, you know, over the course of, of, of the many years you've been in Arlington, you've seen tons of changes. But even in the time that your Arlington has been in existence, boy, a lot of different things have happened and, and major controversies have arisen and either been resolved or, or worked through in some way, et cetera. Um, out of all that stuff, are there are there a few things that you know, either stories or situations that really stick out as having been particularly challenging for you to cover? Sure, and I'll probably uh, put my foot in my mouth by saying this, but um, if you go back to two thousand and seven, when there was a controversy involving the uh, Audison principal and a and a teacher, uh, I broke that story. And uh, uh, it, it, was, uh, it was a journalistic uh, feat, you might say, to break it. However, I made a lot of people mad at me about that. 
And uh, I'll just have to say, in retrospect, looking back over the years, this this story, by the way, was settled uh, in the favor of the school district back in 2013, and the people involved in 2007 were fired. Uh, that's a direct result of of uh, the controversy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in retrospect, um, I probably would have handled things differently than I did. In, in, I in probably would, I, the, the investigation involved, involving the school committee and two people wasn't complete at the time that I, uh, I, I published it. I was provided documents that justified the, the uh, investigation, but I think in retrospect, I might have waited a little what bit there. Mm -hmm. So lesson lessons learned. Less, uh, mm -hmm. And and and, and uh, I have to say I'm I, I'm willing to dig into things and look into things, but I'm 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 not at heart a muckraker. I'm I'm at heart an explainer, and uh, there's a difference. Oh, there certainly is. There certainly is, and I think that uh, you know a lot of the time I think that the explaining part the uh, just the, the kind of the sharing and disseminating of useful information um, within the town uh, is really the, you know, the best that we can do in a lot of ways. And um, I think we're also fortunate to operate in a town which generally, at least in my experience, which is much uh, shorter time uh, than yours, uh, but at least in my experience, this town is, is most of the leaders and decision makers in this town, it seems to me, are do their jobs responsibly enough where I don't feel like we have to be going out and, and digging in the dirt to find out, you know, what's really going on here. There's, uh, I wonder, I wonder whether you agree. Or I not. definitely, I definitely agree with that. The, the, uh, the public officials I deal with in Arlington are uh, among the most informed and above board and straightforward. I've, I have ever dealt with uh, through uh, 50 years of, of following journalism. So I, I know I come in for the criticism that I'm just brown nosing town hall, but uh, hey, I'm just calling it as I see it. And uh, I believe they're good people. Yeah, and, and you know, you've spent the time, frankly, at you know, the hours and hours and hours of listening to the deliberations firsthand uh, in, you know, countless meetings. Uh, I think you've spent the time to, 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 to earn uh, your right to, to speak as an, a truly informed person about that. So others might disagree, of course, um, oh, yeah. but I think, I think you speak from experience and that can't be denied. Um, all right, Bob, you were saying that, um, that you're excited about uh, what's coming up um, in the new year and optimistic. Um, glad to hear that and to share some of that with you. Um, tell, tell us a little bit though, um, kind of push us forward here um, to June and beyond. Um, what, what do you see coming up for your Arlington and for yourself? I can't give away too many secrets, but but um, I think one of the things I've concluded uh, over the past 14 years that I've I've tried to do too much, and there are certain aspects of town life I I I can't get to, and so you you may well be seeing a change in your Arlington away from perhaps what might be called meeting news toward people news. Now, someone may think, okay, that's, that's warm and fuzzy. <laughs> but uh, the fact is I've got a great writer working for me called my Marjorie Howard, my wife. And uh, she, she does excellent people stories. And uh, we, we will be continuing uh, those. And we may be covering less meetings than we fewer meetings <laughs> than uh, in in the past. Now, if somebody doesn't like that, I'll say step up. Want to cover a meeting for me? Go for it. 
Right. Well, you've mentioned that you, you know, the folks that you do have on staff, so to speak, uh, the writers that you have are, that's, that is their beat. So that is their beat. And, and for say for a school committee, I would think a school, the school committee reporter continues to report uh, meetings going forward, particularly during budget season. Uh, the, this, this will not be a surprise to the select board reporter because I've discussed this with her. We may be doing different kinds of uh, town stories that come out of a select board meeting, but aren't necessarily the nitty gritty of everything that happened and every vote that occurred at the meeting. Hey, we have ACMI for that. <laughs> well, it is true, right? And, uh, you know, we will provide uh, that that coverage um, going forward um, in all the excruciating detail anybody could desire. So um, I, I think it sound you sound energized uh, by the idea of moving in the direction that you're talking about. So I think that that sound you know I, I think that sounds very promising. Um, well, I hope so. But there's also a balance involved in life, and so you have to balance what you're doing at home and what you're doing in, in the community. And I, I favor that. Mm -hmm. You've been at this a long time, a long time now, and in a bunch of different places. And, and uh, as we've mentioned, different contexts, different approaches, but on the hyper-local community media uh, question, what advice do you have for People like our interns at ACMI who are really just starting out, but they've chosen ACMI over other internships that they could have because they are already drawn on some level to this hyperlocal coverage. Um, what what can what 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 of your amassed wisdom can you can you share uh, with folks like them? I I think that encouraging them to uh, keep an eye on the local. Which, which if they are working with you, they would be by, by uh, seemed to me that over, over the years that I've been in journalism, that people always wanted to go to the bigger paper or the bigger organization. And uh, there are definite uh, uh, advantages to paying attention to what's, what's at home. And, and that they young kids may not want to hear that, but uh, <laughs> I think it's true. Right, and it's clearly brought a professional lifetime of satisfaction and gratification to you. Um, though it is clearly also, you know, needs to be said, been hard work. So I want to thank you for talking to us today. I want to thank you for all these years. And uh, we look forward to speaking to you again, perhaps when you start on your next venture, who knows. Um, but we also, um, I do wanna mention are appreciative of our own collaboration, ACMI with your Arlington, uh, which really is fruitful um, for us and, uh, and I hope and assume for you as well. It's, it's the longest collaboration I've had of, of any advertiser or other media group. So we, we go way back. And one of the earliest stories I ever did was uh, the story about the history of ACMI. So uh, or what it came from. Yes, that for another day. <laughs> gotcha. Dear, dear viewers. <laughs> All right. I've been talking to Bob Sprague, the uh, creator and the main man behind yourarlington.com. Uh, which has been serving our community really very ably for 15, 14 plus years now and counting. Um, this has been a million dollar gift. I'm James Milan. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.